I want to speak uh, on the second message on the End Time Signs series. Um, the first message we laid that, sought to lay that introduction and foundation in relation to what is happening in these closing days of time before the return of our glorious Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, tonight uh, I want to speak about signs in society signs in society and uh, I want to uh, read the word of God in relation to what the Lord Jesus and what Paul the Apostle said would happen in the end times and we believe uh, what is happening and now and what we're experiencing we're in the end of the end times indeed the last of the last days and in the word of God in First Timothy chapter 4 and verses 1 to five, we want to read God's word, what the word of God has to say in relation to these days in which we're living. Paul the Apostle here is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to Timothy. And he says to him in verse 1 of First Timothy chapter 4, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's the end times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons or devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God on prayer. And then turn over with me please to Second Timothy uh, chapter 3 on verse 1 to 5. Again Paul writing again to Timothy says this. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which means unrestrained, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And there we see uh, a list of society's values in the last days. In the first passage that we read from First Timothy, it gives us there the, the departure from the faith, apostasy, abandonment of the true faith. And then, in Second Timothy, just turn over to the next chapter, chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. And again, this is Paul's last words. And he says uh, to Timothy, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebrook, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned on to fables. And there we have Paul reminding us that in the end times those they'll turn away their ears from the truth. Those that knew the truth will turn their ears away from it and they'll not want sound teaching. And so there we have just a little snippet from God's word of what signs we're to see and look for uh, in the closing days before the, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did mention that in this little series I would speak on the, the end time signs, I would speak about signs in society, signs in nature, signs in the scriptures, signs in Israel, 
signs in the heavens and signs in the nations. So I want to look tonight at the uh, signs in society and I want to sort of look at them under three headings and I know this message is going to be quite long but uh, you're not sitting in church tonight and you have the blessing of, of relaxing in your in your own home so I trust that you'll bear with me. So under three headings I want to speak about uh, social values and then the next heading will be social beliefs and then social views and we're going to take a wee look at these and spend some time on it. These are by no means exhaustive but it will give you a synopsis really of what is happening in society today in 2020 in our day and generation. So I really want to ask ourselves and ask you the question uh, what do you really value as a society? What do you and I really value as a society? That's the question. Well, in the past, Great Britain as a nation, it built its values on the Word of God, as emphasised by Queen Victoria. She was asked on what a question, on what occasion, what was the secret of Great Britain's uh, success? And she said, uh, she lifted the Bible and she said, our foundation is built on the word of God. This is the secret of England's greatness, of Britain's greatness. The word of God, it was so valued. And uh, as a nation, it built its values on structures and morals, morality and laws, on God's word and on its commandments and even the houses of parliament. I believe that under the Kwai minister and when the, quest, when the prime minister is doing this, given his question times and so on, that the dispatch box that underneath that box is a copy of God's word, I'm, I'm led to believe. So what we as a nation value in society? Well, in times past, of course, we, we loved our, our liberty and our freedom. And that's what, of course, Britain stood for, to have that liberty and that freedom. But what we as a nation valued in society... I, whenever I was a young boy growing up, uh, I can only speak from my own experience, uh, certainly we had a fear and respect for God. We were taught that in an early age in school assembly, we would have said our prayers, we would have had a fear for God, we learned the Lord's Prayer. Uh, my mother, even though she wasn't a Christian, tucked us into bed at night and told us to be sure and say your prayers which of course was the Lord's Prayer that we grew up with. And so we had that fear and respect for God. We had a reverence for God's Word and for the clergy. I always had a respect for the Bible. I knew it was God's Word. I never would have, uh, by any means or stretch of the imagination, would, would have uh, said anything blasphemous about it. I always had great respect for it, a great respect for ministers and for those who were called to preach God's word. I always had a reverence for them. Society in those days, I believe, we sought to attend the place of worship and honour the Lord's day. That was without exception. Many, many did that. And uh, that was universal in the nation, really. And we respected our elders and we had a healthy fear of death. Those were values that were uh, instilled into us as children uh, and as a nation respected. Well, in general, life was precious, wasn't it? The Lord's Day was honoured. Most people feared God. There was respect for law and order, for police and doctors and teachers and nurses and uh, family values were upheld. There was little divorce and uh, there was healthy family relationships. These were the normal and the acceptable qualities of life as a nation when we were growing up. But it seems to be from the mid-50s, that's certainly what I notice in society, that it had started to drift badly from God and started uh, morally to depart from, from God's standards. And as a result, uh, we have spiralled down. I lived in a generation that didn't experience the Second World War. My mother and father did, but I'm the generation that didn't, and I didn't experience any real hardship 
growing up as a child and so therefore I was shielded and sheltered from the hard years of life and experience that many, many uh, endured through those tough times. And uh, today with the advances in modern technology and science and culture, there's travel and education, we're really less dependent upon the Lord and we can get along quite nicely without him. And I feel that's really where society is today, that we can get along without God. But the word of God says, uh, but the nation that forgets God shall perish. And uh, we need to be so careful in these days to give God his rightful place. But society in general uh, have forsaken God. Many of our social values that we cherished uh, and embraced as a nation are in the sight of a holy and a righteous God today. You know, they're abominable, repulsive and blasphemous and idolatry. Many of our values today that we cherish and embrace in God's sight, they're detestable. Society today, its social value is on their human rights or their rights for themselves. This is really what they have replaced the word of God with today is replaced by our human rights. It's all about ourselves. It's all about ourself today as a society. And I have noticed how uh, values have changed from the mid-50s as a society. It seemed to be that era when music uh, came to the fore, a society that grew up with that um, free love and expression and uh, a society where everybody wanted to do what they wanted to do and they wanted to be unrestrained from anything that would really hold them back in pursuit of their own of their own uh, values and that seems to be just really taken off at a pace in society today and I'm going to speak about some things here now that perhaps will shock some or, or maybe even disturb some and make some very uncomfortable but these are some facts of life and how things have changed greatly the things that we once valued and held so dear are now uh, not very valuable to us whatsoever and I want to just mention a few here and uh, under the first heading of social values social values uh, first of all the value of the unborn child today uh, we don't value that now as a society we have brought in these extreme abortion laws the World Health Organization published their figures there that between 40 and 56 million abortions every year. Isn't that unbelievable? Between 40 and 56 million abortions per year. That's 153,425 abortions per day. 6,393 per hour. 107 abortions per minute. Isn't that absolutely incredible? So by the time I have preached these messages, this message, there'll have been thousands aborted. And these, these little babies who are precious human beings made in the image of a holy God, who have now been stripped and robbed of life and they're of no value and have been disregarded uh, into, the, into the, the rubbish can, it's, it's absolutely incredible what uh, society is doing and even there in New Zealand uh, the Prime Minister uh, Jacinda Ardern has approved the most extreme abortion laws in the world uh, it's desperate what they've done let me just give you seven little facts of what they've passed in New Zealand abortion will now be available on demand for up to, for any reason up to birth it's not desperate Sex selective abortion will be legalised so you can choose whether you want a boy or a girl. The current 20 weeks limited for disability selective abortion will be scrapped and abortion will be available up to birth for disabilities including cleft lip, club foot and Down syndrome. So if you have a Down syndrome baby and has come full term you can actually abort that child. Isn't that incredible what they're going to do? You know I was just thinking 
uh, you can kill a baby in the womb and there'll not be a word about it. You have the right to do that. But if that baby's born and born healthy and well and if you were to kill that baby you'd be charged with murder outside of the womb. What really is the difference? Murder's murder whether in the womb or out of the womb. Life is life. Nobody seems to care about that. Also that said there will be no requirement that a doctor must be involved with providing an abortion. Isn't that amazing? They're going to let anybody do it. There will be no legal requirement that babies born alive after a failed abortion are given medical support. In other words, they'll be left to die. Just let them die. There will be no legal requirement that pain relief be given to babies being aborted between 20 weeks and birth. How cruel is that? And there will be no legal restrictions on controversial methods of abortion such as intact dilation and extraction abortions. That's also known as partial birth abortions. It's not absolutely horrendous, horrendous with this woman uh, who's a mother herself, I believe, is, is allowing and legislated for to be brought in to New Zealand. And uh, Australia has embraced the same laws and is it any wonder the Lord has burned them with fire and floods and earthquakes uh, because of what they've done to the unborn child that's been made in the image of God. The most extreme abortion laws in the world. And the amazing thing is the UK Parliament has passed the new abortion bill as well for Northern Ireland and that was brought in this week. And uh, it's desperate what they've done here. And in fact 79% of Northern Ireland people actually refuse it, they don't want it. And you can actually abort a baby for a disability, whatever, up to full term. It's absolutely incredible what uh, Stormont has accepted there in the hill. And there's not a voice uh, of our local government at all seem to be really rising to this. And is it any wonder that God is judging the nation uh, for what they're doing in light of destroying and bringing in these terrible, terrible laws? In fact... 92% uh, of Down syndrome babies are aborted. Isn't that terrible? That's 92 out of 100 Down syndrome babies are aborted. It's absolutely terrible and they're such loving children and have so much love to give. In fact, Amazon was uh, selling t-shirts there. They had them posted up and it wrote on them, it said on them, uh, Let's make Down syndrome extinct. Is not terrible. Let's make Down syndrome extinct. One mother said who has a Down syndrome baby, she says it's modern eugenics. It really is. And that's just what they're doing. It's terrible. So that's the value of the unborn child in today's society. And then there's the Word of God not taught as authoritative in schools, society. Generally speaking today does not want the word of God. Evolution is now taught as the origin of life. We are taught that we, we evolved from some distant life form. That we weren't created. And that as a species we have developed. And that every generation we seem to get a little bit better. But as you look into society I don't see any facts for that. As a society getting better through the process uh, of regeneration and uh, and getting better year on year. We see that God is equated to the history books. He's treated as false and fake and fables, the word of God. We read that in Timothy, that's what they would say in the last days. It's all about the sciences, the arts. There's no mention of sin. God's laws have been voted off the statute books in Parliament and replaced with human rights laws. It's all about our human rights. Our, you take things to the European Court of Human Justice if you feel that your human rights are being infringed and take it to court and get your rights sorted out. You're the one who has the rights. And uh, humanism, humanism really is the answer now for society's needs. Let's look to ourselves and we'll sort it out. I was 
very much uh, dismayed when Boris Johnson, when he made the Prime Minister's speech there recently on COVID-19, says, we'll beat this thing. We will beat it. And I just had a witness in my spirit. He'll not beat it. Nobody will beat it. Only God can remove this. He's in control and we need to look to him. No government will beat it. It'll be God that'll remove it. So, you know, they're saying here, let's help make society better. That's the humanists. Let's clean it up. You know, in the eyes of God, society is not getting better. It's getting worse and further and further away from God. It's getting worse. Society desires and embraces liberalism. That's what society seems to be doing today. I'm no scholar, I'm no theologian, I've no Bible college education, but I do have my common sense and I can look around me and see what's happening. And society today is full, it's liberal, liberalism is abounding. In other words, I'll do what pleases me. And that reminds me of that verse of Judges in the Word of God. Everyone did that, which was right in their own eyes. And that's what the people uh, are doing today. Doing that which is right in their own eyes. They're not listening to what the Word of God has to say. They're just doing that which is right in their own eyes. But you know, friends, um, what's acceptable today was not acceptable in my generation as normal behaviour. But you know, we've been here before. We've been here before. Look at those scriptures in Romans 1, verses 21 to 28. Let me read uh, some of these some of these verses to you in the book of Romans. Um, so Romans chapter 1, and verses 21 to 28. Because that they knew God, sorry, but that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. We live in a thankless society. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts, on creeping things, wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonour their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's what they've done. They've changed the truth of God into a lie. Today they're calling uh, evil good and good evil. They've twisted it, usurped it about and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. They're more interested in serving ourselves and looking after ourselves than worshipping God who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, here's one of the saddest verses of scripture. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, we don't want to know the knowledge of God, God give them over to your reprobate mind, that means debased, to do those things which are not convenient but filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, and the list goes on. You can read it yourself. The things that are happening in society today, it was not acceptable as normal behaviour in my generation. There's such a, a surge for same-sex marriage in society. Uh, transgender, people that were born men and boys and want to become girls, girls want to become boys, bisexual, <laughs> they don't know what they want, some of them, uh, civil partnerships now is the thing, uh, gay marriage that came in in 2014, how that has moved, uh, now they have a, a social union, 
In other words, a mixed sex civil partnership. And that's to nullify God's command and God's uh, ordained form for marriage. That God union between one man and one woman. That nullifies that by having this uh, civil partnership of uh, social union. And then there's the push of the LGBT and Q. LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and Q is for queer. Or those that are questioning they call themselves, some of them, pansexual or omnisexuality. In other words, they're happy with one or the other, a man or a woman. And then there's those that are non-binary. They don't know what they are. They don't know if they're a man or a woman, a boy or a girl. There's total and utter confusion in society amongst the younger generation today. They do not know what to believe. And they actually want to teach this in schools as normal behaviour patterns and they're seeking to push legislation through Scotland's parliaments and through Westminster to seek to get this taught in schools and in the statute books. It's absolutely horrendous what, how far we have got from the word of God and even today uh, cohabiting families are the fastest growing family type up to 3.4 million in 2017. Uh, cohabited and that 48 percent of children were born to unmarried couples it's the norm now in society just to live together not to marry not to commit uh, god says that uh, a marriage is a covenant and uh, many today look upon marriage just as a contract uh, but that's not how it is in the eyes of god it's a covenant it's for life till death us do part but that's not the case in society today. Some marriages don't even last a year, some not even six months before both parties have separated and walked away from their covenant of marriage before God. Society, I feel, is getting worse, not better. It's very selfish, materialistic, immoral, pleasure-seeking, power-hungry, anti-God, anti-Christian and anti-Christ in the eyes of a holy and a righteous God who will punish sin. He must punish sin. And God is righteous. And then you have, uh, I want to speak about here, the social beliefs. Uh, as a society, many have thrown out God. Is not the truth. We have thrown God out of society. We have, a, we, um, have as a society, embraced evolution, as I've said, and science as the final authority and abandon God as sovereign and supreme. We are called a Christian nation in principle, but it's a name only. We're not really a Christian nation. It's just a name. There are many of the following types of people in today's society, and we know that. There's the atheist. That's a, the belief that there's no God at all. I call them the godless group. In society, they, they're the atheistic people. There's agnosticism. They say, I don't know whether there is a God or not. I would call those the careless group. And then there's the, <coughs> what we call the pantheism. In other words, everything is God. They're the embraces group. They'll just embrace everything. Everything's God. And uh, they're happy with that. And then there's deism. Uh, God created the world, but he can't control it. In other words, you know, he's good enough to make it, but he's not good enough to sustain it. Well, that's just the ridiculous group. There's no doubt about that. And then here we have the humanisms. The humanist, uh, we create our own set of ethics. I call them the, re the rebellious group. They're the ones that uh, are to the forefront in society now and pushing out putting those advertisements on the London buses. There probably is no God. Go ahead and enjoy life. And they're the ones that want God out of society. And it's our own ethics that will rule us and that we'll be guided by. And of course we know there's theism. That's as God created and controls the universe. That's the truth which makes most sense of nature and history to me. Those are the wise group and I trust you're in that group that you believe that the Most High God rules and reigns in the affairs of men 
And uh, this coronavirus hasn't taken God by surprise. God has permitted it. God is using it. And God is judging through it. Judging the nations. And just one little virus, isn't it amazing, has brought the world to its knees. 1.3 billion people, three I think it's a quarter of the world's population, are now on lockdown. On lockdown. God is all the, always on the throne. Always will be, always was and always shall be on the throne. And here's the amazing thing. Uh, yet when there's tragedy and catastrophe in the world, many seek to blame God. Isn't it amazing? I've come across individuals like that. How could a God of love allow this to happen when there's tragedy? And it reminds me there of uh, a true story. It's uh, Anne Graham, that he's, she's the daughter of the late Billy Graham. And she was interviewed on the early show in America by Jane Clayson. And she asked her, how could God let something like this happen? And she was referring to uh, the Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina. And Anne Graham gave an extremely profound and insightful response to that. And uh, that Hurricane Katrina, there was uh, 1,833 uh, 1, deaths. People died as a result of that. It cost the US uh, government $125 billion as a result of that. New Orleans was devastated. And it's still being rebuilt, rebuilt today, and that's 15 years later. And of course, uh, New Orleans, um, it has the it's the capital of what they call the big, the big easy, uh, 24 hours of nightlife, and it's uh, pilferated with sin, sin capital, nearly, and uh, a lot of voodooism and witchcraft and drug abuse and all of that. There in New Orleans, a very dangerous place apparently to be at night. But anyway, uh, in light of that uh, Hurricane Katrina, uh, she, uh, Jane Clay Clayson asked on, says, why, how could God let something like this happen? And here's what Anne Graham gave in response. She said, I believe God is deeply saddened by this, just as we are. But for years we've been telling God to get out of our schools, to get out of our government, and to get out of our lives. And being the gentleman he is, I believe he is he is calmly backed out. How can we expect God to give us his blessing and his protection if we demand he leave us alone? And is not true as we look at society today, we have abandoned God. God. We have abandoned his word. We have abandoned his house. Very few people today, percentage of population, attend a, a place of worship. Uh, there's more would attend a, a football match on a Sunday than the houses of God. It's really, really sad how society uh, has imploded on where it is going. You know, uh, even in Edinburgh there, Edinburgh Council, they banned a Destiny Church from hiring a public building for a Billy Graham conference because a, a speaker from the Billy Graham campaign, he said that homosexual behaviour was unacceptable to God and is against God's word. And as a result of that, the council withdrew uh, from letting them have in the public venue because it said uh, it breached its diversity policy. And so here you have councils now, if you say anything or preach or proclaim God's word as truth and it cuts across the diversity policy, you can be refused free speech and a place to gather and proclaim God's word in a public forum. This is where society is heading to. We are definitely on a very downward spiral in the last days. Public discussion, even of the Lord Jesus Christ, is suppressed in the schools and in the workplace. God and Christ are they're mocked 
on TV, blasphemed, made jokes of by the comics and these satire series on television shows, devalued and dismissed in today's society, God's a joke for many, and Christ is blasphemed. And it seems to be that the, the Christians uh, are really bl blasphemed indeed those that follow the Lord Jesus they don't speak out against Islam or any other religious groupings as much as they cry and mock Christianity and the Lord Jesus well we're not surprised because the word of God said that in the last days indeed they would do that isn't it amazing that people believe what the papers and the media say but question what God's word the Bible says they would believe the Financial Times or the Daily Mirror or the Sun or the Telegraph or the Independent or the Guardian or the Belfast Telegraph or Newsletter first before they would believe the question, the Word of God. And God's Word has been standing firm for thousands of years and it still and always will be true and sure. It's one thing we can depend upon. But you know, we're not surprised, as I, as I said earlier, uh, you know, we've been here before. You just have to read Romans again, one twenty four. Uh, uh, God give them up. Well, you know, that's humanism in full flow now, isn't it? No God, no heaven, no hell, no sin, no accountability, no worries. Just get on and enjoy life, for there probably is no God. I believe for many that's their social beliefs. That's what they believe. But you and I know that the word of God, that uh, there's an accountability day, uh, the day of great exposure, uh, when God will judge the living and the dead. And each one, each one of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And thank God uh, that in that day, the day of the unsaved, I'll not be there. The great white throne judgment of Revelation chapter 20. When, the, when those rejectors will stand before God and give an account of their sin and of their life. And be cast into the lake of fire which burneth forever and forever. And then we we'll have uh, the social views. And I just want to uh, look at this then just in closing. Social views. Relating to today's society. All faith based religions. They reckon lead to the, the, the same God. Or gods and utopia eventually. If you have one to follow that is. Or if you don't believe well then it doesn't really matter. Liberalism definitely is abounding in society. Their mantra seems to be I'll do it my way. That's the mantra of liberalism. I'll do it my way. No restraints, no restrictions of any kind on my human rights. I want to do it my way. I want my own will. I want my own methods. And I want what's right for me. And it's me first. This seems to be the social view of many today. Education of self is uh, more important than God's word. Education gets uh, preeminence for many. Yes, education's good in its right place, but unfortunately, this social society today has left God out, just as um, Anne Graham reminded us through that answer. And then there's consumerism, isn't there? We're a society of consumerism today. We can't get enough of things we don't need. Consumerism is priority for many. Shopping, materialism, buying all this stuff that we don't need that'll be stripped off us eventually as job reminded us we brought nothing into this world and we'll take nothing out the only thing you'll take out is your character and the testimony that you've left and we pray it'll be a good one for the lord jesus christ and then there's sport isn't there and pleasure it's more important than religion the late bill shankley said that uh, football is more important than religion and uh, you know there's nothing more important than being saved than being right with God and that will only be accomplished through the Lord Jesus Christ but you take now Sunday sport 
It's such a big thing. All the big football, major football matches are played on a Sunday and the stadiums are filled with pleasure-seeking people following a football team. And you know, it takes me back to uh, the Roman culture where the big hippodromes and the amphitheatres where the people gathered to be entertained. And it was a different form of entertainment. Uh, but nonetheless, it's the same thing, just in a different form. They want to be entertained. And uh, people that are entertained like that on a Sunday certainly don't have any time for the Lord Jesus Christ. Sport and pleasure are more important than the house of God, the word of God, and the people of God. Society has lost the true value of of what it is to have the Lord's day. And then marriage. Marriage is not essential now as a building block for family and society. Marriage has been disregarded for many as meaningful and purposeful in today's a multicultural and modern society. That is really sad. Marriage in the sight of God is honourable and it's a covenant between a man and a woman and it's not a contract. Many people today think it's a contract. They're taking out these prenuptial agreements whereby if the marriage breaks down they can't take the other person's wealth and money. They just look upon it as a contract. Praise God he doesn't treat us like that. Marriage in the sight of God is for life, it's honourable, it's a covenant and uh, we enter into that before God who has promised to bless it and solemnise it to his glory. And marriage is honourable indeed and sadly today many in society don't see the value of it or recognise the importance of that. The Bible they say is outdated now. And uh, it's irrelevant in a modern multicultural society. The Word of God uh, to many is a book that's never read, never opened, is of uh, no relevance to them. And as far as they're concerned, it was written thousands of years ago and it's not relevant for today. And even those that do look at it in society seek to pull passages out that will suit their sin and give them comfort for sinning. Even those, and we'll look at it uh, some of these days, uh, some of these messages, signs in the church where the, uh, where the false church are taking God's word, as Peter says, and twist it to suit their uh, warped thinking. And that's exactly what is happening in society today. These are all end time signs that the Lord Jesus told us about. And then look what's happening now in regards to mental health. And uh, mental health, they say, needs fixing. Look at the amount of people on drugs, homelessness, suicide, addictions, abuse, lawlessness, confusion. Society is imploding around us. There's no doubt about it. It's imploding around us. So what is the answer for today's society? Well, the Word of God says in Proverbs 14 and 34, that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sin is a reproach to any people. And when the wicked reign, the people mourn. And there's no doubt about it. It's not the righteous that are reigning in our nation. And as a result, the nation is reaping uh, what the ungodly are sowing. We reap what we sow. There's no doubt about that. The nation that forgets God and throws God out shall implode and perish. It has to. We need the Lord. But the nation that seeks God shall be blessed. The nation that seeks God shall be blessed. I just want to read this Psalm, Psalm 33 here in closing. And pass a few comments on it if you want to. Turn with me in it uh, to the word of God. Psalm 33. And listen to these tremendous words of scripture, these tremendous words of truth. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with a psaltery on an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skilfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. 
He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Now that nullifies evolution for me. He gathered the waters of the sea to gather us in heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. This is what's needed in society today. We need the fear of the Lord. Oh, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And one day they will. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to nothing. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. You know the lawmakers can do whatever they want. They can make all these laws. But God says that he'll bring them to naught. He'll bring them to naught. Verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. God will not change his word. And God will not change his mind about sin. And God will not compromise to suit nations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Is not tremendous. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. That's our answer. That's what we need to do. We're praying that through this Covid virus that has smitten us this end time plague, that the nations would seek God, would turn to God. These signs are signs from God, messages from heaven, for the nations to turn and to weep and to repent of sin and to seek the true and living God. And then God will have mercy upon us. The Lord looketh from heaven and beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Armies cannot save us. Multitudes of soldiers cannot deliver us. An horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy what a verse what a verse for you and i what a verse for our land what a verse for our province what a verse for the nation behold the eye of the lord is upon them that fear him and if we'll fear god will repent of sin and will seek him and he says upon them that hope in his mercy there's mercy with the Lord for all that will seek him, for those that will call upon him, for those that will repent of sin and flee to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's mercy, hallelujah, there's mercy for those that will seek him to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Dear friends, there's mercy with the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver their soul from death. He can deliver you not only from this death, But from the death of deaths, the second death, where if you are not saved, your soul will be cast into the lake of fire, which burneth forever and forever, which is the second death. And you can read that in Revelation chapter 20. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. That's, That's where I am today. That's where many are today. My soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Yes, it's good to take precautions. But it's great in these uncertain days to have the shield of our Saviour. The precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ around us and about us. And we're safe in Christ. For our heart shall rejoice in him. You know, dear friends, I'm rejoicing in the Lord in these days. I'm not sad and I'm not lonely and... I'm not cast down in spirit. I'm not sitting here in fear. My heart is fixed in Christ. And my soul is secure in him. And I'm trusting in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us. According as we hope in thee. There's the secret, friends. 
the God of mercy. He'll, he'll keep you safe and you can place your faith and hope in him. I just have noticed there recently quite a number of the houses around me I see now that in their windows many have placed uh, the rainbow uh, up in, in view. In fact I've one up myself and that rainbow they've placed, uh, they said they did it in schools for the children as a sign of hope. And I just pray that they'll teach the children the true meaning of the rainbow. That it's not the sign of the LGBT that have hijacked this. But it is God's covenant sign of mercy. And it's a token of remembrance. And every time we look upon that, we remember that because of the wickedness of man, God destroyed the human race off the face of the earth because of their sin and abomination. And as in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. The same things are happening in our day as were happening in Noah's day. There's nothing new under the sun and God is coming to judge. And as they look upon that a covenant sign of promise that those beautiful rainbow colours we're reminded of God's mercy and of God's grace because we read in this narrative in, in uh, Genesis and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and Noah uh, made the ark as God commanded him according to his word and him and his family made it and they brought the animals into it and God shut the door and locked them in and the storms came, and the rain came, which was the picture of God's judgment upon the earth. It fell, and it destroyed destroyed the, all that whole generations right off the face of the earth. But Noah and his family were safe. And dear friends, the ark in the book of Genesis today, we have an ark this day. And it's not an ark made of shittim wood, and an ark made of gopher wood but it's the ark of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus is our safety and our sure security today. And he went to the place called Calvary. And there on that Roman cross, on that cross of wood, he was nailed there for our sin. He took the judgment of a holy God upon himself. He was smitten, he was wounded, he was afflicted, he was battered, he was crucified, and his soul was made an offering for sin. And in those three horrendous hours of darkness, the wrath of a holy God, the wrath of God against all sin, was poured out upon his holy and righteous Son. He was punished, he was wounded uh, for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And there he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, the blessed Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and there he died the just for the unjust that he could bring us to God. And he's our hope today. And he's our safety today. And he's our security. And the word of God says that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can come to Christ tonight. You can come to Christ at this very moment of time. If you'll be willing to repent of your sin. To forsake your sin. And to flee to the Lord Jesus Christ for mercy. To call upon his name. And to trust him with your whole heart. And to rise off your knees. And to seek to follow him till journeying days are done. And not to return again to sin. But to live for Christ. And to seek to follow God and confess him as Saviour and Lord. He is our ark today. He is our refuge. And he is our fortress. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee and as we look upon that rainbow let us be reminded of God's covenant of mercy and there it is for us sheltering under the rainbow of the love of God today shelter under the rainbow of his mercy come in under the rainbow of his blood and shelter yourself beneath the cross of Christ and look on to him and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for he is God, and there is none else. Dear friends, we are living in serious and in awful days, end times, I believe, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. 
And as we look at these uh, end sign times, uh, look at these various aspects of what the Word of God says in Matthew 24, all these things coming together. And the next little message I'll preach on is uh, signs in nature. And the Lord Jesus said, when you see all these things, uh, look up, behold, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And we believe he's coming soon. Oh, be ready. Be ready. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon God while he's near. Seek the Lord Jesus. That would be my message to those that are listening to this little study. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And call upon Christ while he is near. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus seek those that are lost and we know that he will receive all who will come to him. And so my Father bless your precious word and we thank you Lord for the opportunity uh, to share your word uh, Lord today. And we ask for all that will hear it. it will bring blessing and will bring many to Christ and that you'll use it for your glory. We ask this all, Heavenly Father, giving thee thanks in Jesus' precious and worthy name we pray. Amen.